Yo, it's Charlie. Today I'm showing you guys how to make an old school streetwear style t-shirt using Photoshop. And this video wouldn't be possible without Bella Canvas. Bella Canvas makes quality wholesale blanks with the best color options in the industry. And it goes beyond that, guys. Their fabrics are the best in the industry as well. Check them out in the description below. Don't sleep on them, guys. Trust me, they will level up your clothing brand instantly. All right, let's run it back. I'm gonna show you guys how to make an old school streetwear style design in Photoshop. Here's my design process. Let's get it. Step one is prep work, and this is the most boring part of the design process. It's the most tedious part as well. This part consists of a bunch of different things, guys. Cutting out images from the background if needed, uh, finding the right fonts, figuring out colors and all that good stuff. This part I go over in every single video, so I'm not going to go over it again. It's just very repetitive, um, and a lot of you should probably know how to do this by now, but I wanted to include it because it's still important, and uh, yeah. So I found this Cobra. I'm cutting it out of the background preparing it so I can start, you know, adding to it and really building my design up. I will tell you this, so use the tools that you find easier to use. I mean, if you like the eraser tool, use it. If you like the pen tool, use it. If you like the lasso tool, then why not use it? Um, there's even the uh, remove background AI with Adobe Sensei that you could try. Sometimes that works really good. But again, at the end of the day, as long as you achieve the same results, that's all that matters. So that's my one tip for you guys in this section. One thing you might see a lot of the Merch Design Academy instructors do is use something called Threshold to process our images. This effect gives you a print and copy style effect, which is really, really awesome in my opinion. And it's really easy to accomplish. Basically, you just apply a threshold above your image and you can mess with the level and get the desired look that you want. I like to think of threshold as a way of separating the midtones from the highlights or even the shadows. So right now I'm focusing on more of the midtones. And then after that, I'm going to focus on the highlights and then add color overlays to those separate um, tones to create something that looks like this. applied the same exact threshold effect to the flames behind the Cobra. I really liked the way it looked, so I kept it. The client requested green flames, so I added the green color to these flames. It was simple as adding a color overlay. And then I also applied an outer glow which ended up looking really nice. And you guys can see the results right here. The outer glow brought the whole design into a different dimension, which I really liked. The client wanted the Cobra to blend into the flames and almost look like it's fading into the flames. And to achieve that, I just used a few layer masks and a dissolve brush and voila, I had the results I was looking for. I didn't like the color of the snake either, so I ended up changing it to more of a classic purple and green look. And I ended up really loving it. In step four, I experiment a lot, meaning I try things that don't always work and that's okay. Right here, I'm trying some Chrome text, different fonts out, and ultimately I had landed on nothing at first. Like it just wasn't working out for me. But overall, it was a lot of trial and error, and I recommend you guys try things. Even if you have to do something over and over again until you get it right, totally fine, and it's part of the process.
As I was trying to find different fonts that fit this design, I noticed that the Cobra didn't have a tongue, so I just quickly made one with the lasso tool. I finally got to a point where I was happy with the text, so I stuck with this chrome look, and the client really likes it, so everybody's happy. And now it's time to add the final touches to the design, which means sometimes fixing things, adding things, and I added a different version of the design at the end, which was just a thresholded version. I basically took the entire design and added a threshold effect over everything, and it ended up looking really cool and is one of my favorite versions. But ultimately, this is what you have to do to finalize it, and sometimes it takes a long time, sometimes it's really fast. Right here, I'm just gonna include a little time lapse so you guys can watch me make these adjustments, but at the end, we're going to mock up the final design. Now it's time to mock up the design and this is my favorite part of the design process because you get to see your work on a physical product to get kind of a glimpse of what it's going to look like printed. And there are times where I mock up a design and I'm not happy with it, so I have to go back and make changes. At the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, will you wear this? And if you say no to that, then there's a problem there, obviously, so make changes. But overall, uh, that's just the whole process, guys, and it's part of it. It takes patience and a lot of practice. With that, you will get better, I promise you. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I really do. And uh, don't forget to smash that like button if you guys enjoyed the video, and make sure you guys turn on notifications after subscribing because that will notify you that I uploaded a video. Does that make sense? That is all for me. I will catch you guys in the very next video. See you later.